Hey, welcome back to Python with, well, it's not really Python with Scott anymore. This is a new playlist or a new series that I'm creating called uh, Questions Asked by You. Uh, so I always encourage um, any of my subscribers or people coming across my videos, please subscribe, to leave a comment with their questions and I'll jump right on it and make a tutorial, especially if it's something I believe that lots of people would benefit from. Um, and today's question comes from Pete. And so Pete asked, uh, let's have a look here. Hey, um, make data useful. I have two CSV files which need to be compared and verify the values in each of the files are matching. Okay, so validating the um, validating two things are matching. Typically, have them on a key. Uh, so let's read on. In the below example, I am comparing the exact same data. Okay, I'm comparing the exact same data. Yep, yep. I'm I'm really picking that apart. I'm comparing the exact same data, uh, but um, there is an error it should give me but if there is an error it should give me an, an error and the data is not the same in the exact order okay cool that makes a lot of sense to me um, so there's two things at play here uh, I can see you've got some sample sort of data here you've got account number you've got account type and the balance uh, and you've got one two three two three four five six seven and you've got two three four one two three five six seven so there's two scenarios that I can see playing out one is we could match them on the account number um, which would give you 100% match and no sort of reason to be concerned. Or two, we can match on the actual order of the data, which I think is what you're asking for here by saying the exact order, uh, which is an interesting one. So why don't we hit both those scenarios because it's useful for people to know how to A, just join data and look at orphans on either side and, and flag any records that don't match. And B, it's also cool to um, go through the example of matching on the index, so understanding how, um, uh, how are these different and if they are different, how do I flag that? Um, so in this scenario, we would get 100% match on our first problem statement is matching on the account number. But when we want to look at matching on the order, uh, we would possibly get zero. Yeah, we would get no matches. Uh, so yeah, let's go ahead and create some dummy data in, in Excel. I'll probably just fast forward that bit. Um, and then we'll jump right into the Python. Let's get going. All right, so that was a bit more effort than I expected. Uh, so now we have two statement files, uh, CSV1 and CSV2, so statement one and statement two. I'm in my Jupyter notebook. Um, I've installed this via Anaconda. If you haven't got this installed, I highly encourage you jumping over to the Anaconda website and downloading uh, Python 3x and installation. If you want help with that, feel free to leave a comment. I'll happily make a video on that too. Um, so inside my Jupyter, I'm gonna go ahead and create a Python 3 notebook and we'll call this one question for from I guess from Pete um, cool uh, and the first thing we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and import uh, pandas and we're going to do that as PD um, just so it's a bit easier to reference um, if you install anaconda pretty sure pandas yeah does come along for the ride batteries are included uh, so we've got statement one and statement two in my question from Pete folder. So let's go ahead and import both of those um, CSV files and let's have a look at them at a glance. I've purposely uh, modified the files so they don't always match on index and I'll show you that now. Um, so why don't we call this one, uh, where are we, oops. So why don't we call this one statement one uh, is equal to pd.read CSV and if we recall it is statement underscore one dot CSV. Okay, so statement one, make that a bit more exciting. DF for data frame. So all this is doing is reading in uh, the CSV and creating a variable that holds the data frame. Um, so if I go ahead, if I go ahead and paste that in there, uh, we can very quickly see we have three columns, account number, account type and balance. Uh, and they ordered one, two, three, all the way to 13. Um, and you'll see that they're checking, a couple of savings, a few more checkings, and they've got some balances. Um, if I look at uh, bringing in another um, statement, so we've got statement one that's been brought in. Let's just copy and paste that to make it a little bit easier on ourselves. Uh, why don't we call this one statement two? Uh, and we'll just put two there and hit the run button on that. So the cool news is we now can actually view statement one and we can also view statement two. Uh, so what I'll do is I'll bring up statement one and two and we'll just put that one there and that one there. Uh, and we'll have a quick glance and look at the data. So the first thing you'll notice that on statement two, uh, I have purposely marked up the order. So you'll notice here that it goes one, two, three, four, 
uh, 8, 7, 6, 5, and then 9, 10, 11. So the reason why I've done that is in these two files, statement 1 and statement 2, uh, you'll notice, Pete, that uh, if you were to match or join on account number, you'll get 100% matches and there won't be any issues with your file. But you've you've called out that you want to make sure they're in the same order, okay? Um, so we'll be doing the both today. Um, and I'm pretty sure I modified... Did I modify one of the balances? You know what? Let's just let the, the pandas tell us if I did because um, you may want to also check, hey, I want to make sure they're in the correct order but then I want to compare um, the account types and make sure that's not being changed. I also want to compare the balance based on the order, um, so on and so forth. Alrighty, so uh, to get the ball rolling, what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and um, solve problem statement one. Uh, problem statement one is I want to compare two files based on account num um, which is my problem statement and we'll just put that in markup and we'll just make sure there's a space after the hash cool i want to compare two files based on account num so how do we do that so the good news is we've imported both files um, and with pandas you've got you've got the easy uh, merge function so pd.merge okay and if you can type today adam okay pd.merge and what are we merging? So we're merging the first table, which is that one. And we're merging the second table, which is that one. But I've just realized something. They've both got the same headers. So let's take a step back and let's do a little bit more data cleansing up front to make our job a little bit easier um, further on. So what we're going to do is we're going to say uh, statement one underscore DF. What we're going to do is we're going to prefix uh, the columns with the word statement one and so to do that all we have to do is add the very simple add prefix method and inside there we just got to add what the prefix is so for statement one you guessed it we'll call it statement one okay and just like that all of them have statement one before them now that we've done that we've got statement one as a prefix on all of these columns uh, but just remember, if you were to go ahead and run that data frame again, you'll quickly notice that that doesn't stick. And the reason being is you haven't actually renamed the boom. So now when we do it, statement one DF equals statement one DF, uh, we've now got this very nice statement one available to us. Now, again, because we're a little bit lazy, we're going to go ahead and do the same for statement two. So nice and easy. There we go. Add a prefix. And all of a sudden, We've now got statement, wait a minute. Oh, you know what I haven't done? I haven't changed that to two. So let's try that again. Statement two, statement two, statement one, statement one. That's an epic fail. If you see that, just rerun everything and we're back to where we began. So what happened there was every time I run this cell, if I do this lots and lots of times, again and again and again, it's literally adding a statement each time. So then your column names get a bit ridiculous. So to fix that, we just rerun. So we're re-importing the CSV. We're rerunning the statement prefixes and we can see here that statement one df has statement sorry statement two df has statement two before it and statement one has statement one before it so that's that's good that means when we join the data we're not going to have uh weird um post fixes of x and y we're going to have very clean data so let's come back to our i want to compare uh good one adam Oh my God, that's embarrassing. Two files based on account number. So what we're going to do is we're going to use the pd.merge and we're going to say statement one, statement two. So that's the two data frames we are merging. So we are you know, fundamentally joining them. How? We're going to specify either right, left or, or outer. Um, if you're not familiar with SQL joins, I recommend that you jump on Google and have a look at some images. Um, there's some really cool Venn diagrams that show you how left, right and outer joins work. Um, so we are just going to do, oops, outer. Um, and then the next step is we need to define uh, the keys or how we're joining the data. So left on is equal to, um, and that one is as simple as, let's have a look at the column name now. So left on is statement one account number. Okay, and so we put statement one there. Um, and then obviously right on, uh, right on is equal to statement two, which we'll just quickly clean up now because I'm lazy and copy and pasted. So when we run that, uh, what we end up with is an output that is combining the two uh, the two files. Uh, so you'll see here you've got a statement one account number and a statement two account number. Now this resolves problem statement one. We can see that it's matched all of the data. There's no um, empty cells or empty values on either side. Cool, so now that we've joined the data, it shows us that we've got um, the keys all matching um, and what the statement one account number type is versus the statement two account number type is. Um, and we've also got the available balances uh, for each. 
Um, so at this stage, we can start doing some of those comparisons. Now, first of all, we need to make sure that we create a data frame that uh, holds this merged data. So what I'm going to call this is merged statements. Okay, not very inventive. Run that. So now when I view that, shift enter, I can see I've got these merged statements available to me. Uh, I can just start doing some comparisons. Um, so what we're looking out for, we'll do one quick example. Um, I want to understand statement one account type, when it's matched at the account level, does it match your statement two account type? And I can see one example here where it doesn't. Okay, so checking and savings. Now if I had a you know 300 million customers, I may want to do that in an automated fashion rather than reading down the whole list. So um, again, multiple ways to do this. One approach that I take, which I find uh, quite handy, is I define a function which um, has the data frame passed into it, um, and then I reference a couple of different columns to do that. So one way to do that is I could create a, a very simple function um, here that's called, um, let's have a look, compare account, oops, Compare account type, okay. What you're passing in there is your data frame. Now, um, I'm gonna use the variable df. It is a local variable to the function, so it doesn't necessarily have to match um, the same data frame name as say, for example, merged statements underscore df. Um, and we use df here. And so what I'm now able to do is I'm able to reference df and make explicit reference to these particular columns. So what I might do is I might say if df, if df account, where are we, statement, uh, statement one account type is equal to, and we'll, again, we're lazy, so df statement two account type. If those are equal to each other, return one. Okay, so nice and simple Boolean operation. Return one, um, or true and false is the true Boolean operation. Return one. Um, you know what else? Just so we've got a zero in there as well, just to make it look a bit cleaner. Else return a zero. Okay. Um, so what's cool about that is that's now, not now, now it's a function defined. Uh, now we have a function available to us that you can pass a data frame into. Uh, so what's really neat about that is we could actually take the data frame um, and we can do something clever like apply. Now when you are applying, you simply reference the function. No need to add uh, the open and closed sort of brackets. Uh, reference an axis, so axis one, okay. Uh, hit the run button on that and it's going to come back with those ones or zeros. Now where it gets super special is you can then simply define a new column called account underscore compare. Okay. And what we've done there is, I'll just make a bit more room. What we've done there is we now have in our merged DF, we now have whether or not the account uh, matches. So what I can see here is checking and checking, big tick, checking and saving, that's a zero, so really good logic works. Um, I can see here, I've actually done it a number of times. So savings and checking, they don't match, so that's a zero. There's a whole bunch of zeros there, and then it goes back to ones again. Um, so what's really cool about this is you can quite easily then filter your data and then send off your errors. So for example, you might say, hey, you know what? When account compare, which is our little special little guy here, is equal to, oops, equal to zero, um, that's going to come back with true or false. So similar to before, we're just going to wrap that around. So merge statement, wrap around. So it's acting as a filter. And then what we're left with is all of the records and index numbers of where the account types do not match. So then what's really cool about that, sorry, account, yeah, account type, um, is you'd send that off to your you know, data cleansing team or your data input team and say, hey, you know what? For account number two, in statement one, it actually said checking, but in statement two, it's saying savings and I've got the data to prove that, which is really powerful. So that I hope that answers um, problem statement one, which was I want to compare two files based on account num. Uh, let's get down to problem statement two, which I think is the real question you've got for us, Pete. So what we're gonna do is we're just gonna define the problem I want to compare two files and make sure they are in the exact same order. I'll put that in capital so I remember it's very special that they're in the exact same order. So how do we do that? So we've got our two statement um, statements here, statement one and statement two. Cool, so we bring those in. So there's statement one and just below that, and again, we'll make some more space for ourselves. Um, we'll bring in statement two, which is this one here, okay. Again, we're lazy, so we'll just do that one. Statement one and statement two, we want to check the order, okay? So we want to make sure that um, 
the account order is 1, 2, 3, 4, all the way to 13. And if it isn't, so 1, 2, 3, 4, tick, 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 they all get ones. You see where I'm going with this? 8, 7, 6, 5, 9, they do not. Okay, cool. So how we're going to do this is very similar to how we've just gone ahead and done the comparison uh, or sort of matching and comparison on the account number um, just with a slight different twist you notice back here when we did the merge um, it was based on left on right on um, this time round, we're actually going to use the index okay so the index is automatically generated starts at zero and the index is the same for both files what's actually different is these account numbers so to do that what we're going to do is similar sort of thing pd.merge okay so pd.merge uh, and again, what are we merging? So we're merging statement one and statement two. So let's put those in there. And again, we'll just copy and paste and override the one. Statement one, statement two. So this time around, the main difference is we're not going to be matching on a column. We're going to be matching on the index. So statement one, statement two, left index equals true, right index equals true. How? Now last time we used, what did we use last time? Last time we used outer, so we use outer again and we'll do some stuff with that in a second. Uh, and we'll wrap that up there. And so what we've now got is we now have these matched on index. So what we'll do is we'll call this um, combined matched on index data frame. So nice long name, nice and descriptive, okay. Uh, and we'll view that there. So now that we've got it matched on index, what we can actually do is very similar to before, we can do a copy and paste of the previous function and compare uh, whether or not the account numbers are the same. So because we uh, love shortcuts, let's go ahead and look at compare account type. Let's go ahead and compare um, account number. So okay, compare account num. So if statement account, uh, statement one account num is equal to a statement account num, statement two account num. Uh, return one, else is zero, so we run that. Uh, and the same sort of thing as before, we were able to do this apply statement. So let's have a look and say, um, combined on index, okay, data frame. We are doing the, we're, we're basically doing now a um, order compare. And it's equal to, which is make sure we get the right data frame, combined match on index data frame, apply, compare account num. So we'll paste that in there. Okay, so let's go ahead and run that. And what we've actually done here is we've created a new column called order compare, and we're going to run the data frame now. And when we scroll to the right, uh, we get the results exactly as we were expecting. So we knew that we had them in order from one, two, three, four, five, but here it starts at eight. So what I'm expecting to see is lots of ones. Correct, 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 correct. Wrong, 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 and then correct, correct, correct. Um, so what's really cool and fun about this is we can then start to run multiples of these functions, um, and we can even make sure that um, you know we can build up a whole bunch of flags in the columns to say, right, I'm only going to accept data that meets all of this criteria. Um, so Pete, look, good luck. If you need any more help, let me know. I'll make another video. I'm sure this is going to be helpful for other people. Um, and I'll see you next time. Before I wrap up, don't forget, um, I've got a, hairy, a, what is it? a big, hairy, audacious goal um, to get 1,000 subscribers by the end of the year. Um, it's pretty low compared to people with millions, but I'd be really excited and, yeah, super, super pumped if I can get to 1,000. I think I'm currently at, uh, just over 200, uh, which in itself is amazing. So thank you, thank you, thank you to everyone who's subscribed. I hope this has been valuable, but if there's any questions, um, please just leave something in the comments um, and I'll get back to you. And if it's, you know, big enough to make a video, let's do it. See you guys.